Our gospel lesson is from Mark's gospel, the first chapter, verses 9 through 15. And uh, this lesson takes us back to the very beginning of Jesus' public ministry. There are three short paragraphs, but they depict three distinct events in the life of Jesus right at the very outset of his ministry. His baptism in the Jordan, his temptation in the wilderness, and then the beginning of his preaching throughout Galilee. Mark, we've noted that his style is very clipped. He doesn't give a lot of details about things, but it seems to me that he clusters these three events, these three paragraphs together. And I'd like to suggest that there's some interesting, important progression as they're connected together that speak to us about Jesus' identity, but not simply his identity per se, but his own consciousness of his identity, who he is. Jesus knew who he was. Jesus didn't have to try to be somebody. He knew who he was in relationship to God and who he was in terms of the calling in his life. And he was at home with God and he was at home with himself. Here are the reading of these uh, three events. Mark 1, beginning at verse 9. <clears throat> In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, he was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Recently, as I was riding along in the car, I heard a man, a very successful man, being interviewed, and I am sure he would have been the envy of many people. But listen to how he ultimately summed up his life. Along the way, he said, quote, I violated every one of my life principles to get what I wanted. I violated every one of my life principles to get where I wanted. I didn't hear much more about the interview, not sure who, who he was, but drove on down the road and I began to wonder how many other people have lived that way or who are living that way. I think the story tells something like this. Here is one who little by little lost his focus. Subtly, insidiously, in a creeping way, he began to manage his life by a series of moral trade-offs. You know the end justifies the means. And at first, these trade-offs were exceptions, but then they became patterns. And these trade-offs then evolved into rationalizations, and those rationalizations were really more defensive than they were rational. And the rationalizations became denials. And after a while, he begins to actually believe his own denial theories. Till it degenerates into a form of self-deception and ultimately self-delusion. All along the way, he's making progress toward his goal and he's finding what he wants and he will do most anything to get it. Until he finds that what he has found, he no longer wants. He finally gets to the place where he can hardly recognize himself. Everything that he has done has been one breach of his own identity, and he finally finds himself asking himself, what have I become? 
this is not really me. Or is it really him? Now he's at odds with himself. As James would put it, he is double-minded, not whole. Who he claims to be is not reflected in his choices or in his actions. And strangely enough, he insists that he is not really the kind of person he has come to be. Yet it becomes increasingly self-evident that he, in fact, is what he still refuses to acknowledge about himself. And he's confused and suffers from all sorts of identity issues. The man on the radio said, I violated every one of my life principles to get what I wanted. Makes me think of what Jesus said. What will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their own soul? Sad story, isn't it? But I think we see it played out in our culture too often. A professional athlete juices up on steroids. He's a good guy. He is a very disciplined athlete. He has trained hard. He's made sacrifices to get where he is. And it would seem now that a little enhancement would help. His heightened performance pleases the crowd, and his owners are very happy with the increase at the gate. It's good for the game, it would seem. In fact, it seems like a necessary thing. Again, the, the ends justify the means, it seems. Given all the expectations of everyone around him and the competition that he's up against, it almost seems reasonable. A top executive of a huge corporation can over time and with a long record of good successes become impervious to his own greediness. He begins to live like he's in another world in which his personal freedoms are valued over a sense of common economic justice. There are people in positions of public service they can easily become more political than principled. They sincerely want to serve the common good, and they have a lot to offer, and they know that in order to do the good that they aspire to do, they must first get elected. And so it's very tempting and very easy to violate some of their own principles and cut across their own sense of moral and ethical standard to win the election, of course, in order to ultimately do the good that they aspire to do. After all, they have made great sacrifices to get where they've gotten. And you know, they really believe that they have good, necessary stuff to offer. And finally, it's what we call politics, after all. That's how politics work. 